Today we're going to be, begin with the end of the parable because it's more interesting and also because there's a message for our conscience. So the rich man is suffering in Hades and we want to realize that he's not there because God sent him. He's there because his conscience judged him and his conscience told him what he was doing was wrong. One thing we need to know is that God, as we said it before, he doesn't, God doesn't send anyone to hell. People choose to go there and their conscience judges them. So we'll get to that more in a minute. The rich man asks Abraham to relieve his pain, but Abraham says there's a chasm that prevents anyone from crossing. So he says, Then, Father, I beg you to send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Okay, so the question here is, what will it take for people to believe? So back then, people were basically saying, Well, Jesus, if you're God, give me more evidence. As soon as you prove you're God, then I'll believe. So the same thing happens with all of us. We sometimes think, well, as soon as I get more money, then I'll donate to the poor. Our conscience tells us, well, I'll give up my sin as soon as what? I'll give my life to God when, well, when? So for me, um, there's one thing that God is asking me to do that's really hard. And I'm not doing it. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want some privacy. (laughs) But I'm just telling you, he's given me enough evidence. I know it's right. It's not bad. By the way, it's not a sin. (laughs) It's just something he wants me to do, and I'm not doing it just because it's hard. I'm just being honest. And with this parable, he's saying, look, I'm not going to give you any more evidence. You know you have to do it. And this parable, I love it because it's basically saying, eventually I've got to make a choice. So Jesus sets up the parable so that it's clear. The rich man knows what he is doing is wrong. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The rich man has the means of helping. Okay, we've said this before, when you wear purple back then, it required an expensive dye. He's got all he has. He even wastes food. Do we have that? Is it highlighted? Thank you. He's wasting food. And he even knows the guy by name who's dying outside his house. This guy knows what he is doing is wrong. And there are eternal consequences to our decisions and to our procrastination. So this isn't to put unhealthy pressure on us. This is just reality. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. So one of the most merciful things that Jesus does for us, he tells us the truth. This is good to know. And our conscience, not only does God judge us, our conscience judges us. Isn't that amazing? There is something inside us that says this is right, this is wrong. And we know the conscience is listening to the voice of God. So it's a beautiful voice, but it can be very challenging. Who here has seen that 1990 movie? It's a gangster film, Goodfellas. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen it, it's violent. I haven't even seen the whole thing. It's a, real, it's, it's a story about the real-life uh, story of Henry Hill. Henry Hill grew up in book, Brooklyn. His father would beat him because he was failing at school, and he had dyslexia. So he hated his family. He hated school. And when he was about 14, he started doing favors for these men in his neighborhood. 
and they kept on giving him money, more favors, more money. And then it kept on escalating, and eventually they asked him to start selling stolen goods. They asked him to blow up cars. When he was 16, he got arrested. And what's really interesting, he tried to get out of the mob. And I watched this interview of him years later when he's an old, older man. And when I first heard this interview, it really struck me how strong his conscience was. And this is what he said, and I'm going to change it because he swears every other word. So I'm going, I'm going to clean it up. But he said this, and I realized they started asking me to do more things for them. And I said, forget this. This ain't right. I'm getting out of this business. When I first heard that, I said, wow, that guy's conscience is really strong. This ain't right. I got to get out of this. So it, it is our conscience that judges us. My conscience would say, I don't, I don't feel good when I lie. We'd say, I, this is not right. I'm, I just swore at that guy last week. Don't feel good. I don't feel good disobeying God, etc. But our consciences proclaims another more beautiful truth. It says, we're better than this. I want to be better. My family needs me to be better. My friends need me to, to be better. It's a beautiful thing. And our conscience says, I do love Jesus. I'm just struggling and I need help. So let's just listen to our conscience with these two questions today. What action am I doing or have recently done really bothers me? What action am I doing or have recently done really bothers me? And what am I delaying that I know I should be doing? What am I delaying that I know I should be doing? When it comes to, uh, to following Jesus as his disciples, this is a journey, and I just want to talk quickly about two points along the journey. Uh, the first part of the journey is when we're coming to know Jesus and his death and resurrection for us. And you know what it is? It's just a matter of time. Just give us more time and we'll move further along the journey. That's the first point. The second point along the journey is when we know him and we love him, but we're where we're holding back. And our conscience tells us that we're delaying. So if you look in your pews, this is what I talked about last week. If you just pull that prayer card in front of you, just take a look at it. This is the uh, prayer of... Pope Benedict XVI. And it's a beautiful prayer. And the genius of this prayer is that it helps us make Jesus the center of our life. And it's so positive. Because when we choose to follow Jesus, he will not do anything that ultimately hurts us. He won't take away everything we enjoy. That's impossible. When we choose to follow Jesus and make him the center of our life, it's basically we're making every decision with him in mind. What would Jesus want me to do? How can I love more like Jesus? This is so beautiful. So think about this prayer. It can really help you if you make it sincerely, obviously. You know, when it comes to that one thing I know I'm not doing, but actually I do want to do, I'm just really struggling with it, I feel like St. Augustine. St. Augustine, at one point in his journey, he wanted to follow Christ, but he's very hesitant. And so he went to a priest, and the priest told him about a man named Victorinus. Victorinus was his famous Roman teacher, and he became Christian. But he became a secret one. He wouldn't tell anyone about it because he was afraid of losing his reputation. So he was halfway there. And so he started reading the scriptures. And when he read the scriptures, he felt courage, it said. And the other thing is he realized that if he denies Jesus, Jesus will deny him for all eternity. And so that just pushed him over to make the decision. And when St. Augustine heard that story, he said, he sighed, and he said, I long for that freedom too. I want that. And so that's how I feel. I'm struggling, but I want it. So let's see if we can just take one step forward, knowing that eventually we're going to have to make a choice.